Hi my lovely weirdos, welcome back to another episode of Dark Crossroads. This is your host, Roxanne Fletcher, and today we're covering another case that I find extremely interesting. If you guys know me, you know that I have worked in healthcare my whole life. Um, I was a CNA in hospice, I worked as a health unit clerk and a CNA on labor and delivery at the hospital in my local town. I have also um, done a lot of volunteering. I've worked in a dental office. I have done it all, to be honest. Um, but hearing about these cases with healthcare workers and nurses who have a desire to kill really draws my interest in because they are brought into that profession to help people, to save lives, to comfort, and instead, how they find the desire to be the superhero, to prove that they are the best, always gives me goosebumps and leaves me wondering how. Like, how can a human do this? So let me introduce you to the Angel of Death. United States military veterans are highly respected and are responsible for safeguarding our country. As such, they are often granted comprehensive health care by the Department of Veteran Affairs. In the early 90s, the death rate at the Veteran Affairs Medical Center in Northampton, Massachusetts seemed to surge without any explanation. A nurse named Kristen Gilbert was the nurse on duty for so many of the fatalities that her co-workers named her the Angel of Death. Their laughter soon turned to horror, though, when they released the casualties were no accident. Kristen Gilbert was a serial murderer. Kristen Heather Strickland was born in 1967, and she grew up in a rather normal household in Massachusetts, deep in the suburbs. Former neighbor John Moore told the Boston Globe after her arrest that as a youngster, she seemed decent and normal. She was very intelligent and sharp. She excelled at school and was a member of the math club. Friends and some family members, however, said that she was known to be a habitual liar, a thief, and a manipulative person. According to the Associated Press, while a student at Bridgewater State College, she was ordered to receive psychiatric treatment after faking a suicide attempt and telling her ex-boyfriend that she had eaten glass to try to kill herself. In 1988, she married boyfriend Glenn Gilbert, and then the both of them ended up having two sons, and she went on to become a registered nurse. Soon after, she landed a job at Northampton's Veteran Affairs Medical Center. She was well-liked by her co-workers, who remember her organizing the yearly Secret Santa for staff and gift drives for disadvantaged families. One of her co-workers was a Persian Gulf War veteran named James. He was a police officer at the hospital. By 1995, casual flirting between Kristen and James had blossomed into a full-on extramarital affair. Co-workers were taken aback by the couple's unprofessional public displays of affection. According to the Boston Globe again, they were observed playing footsie and touching during emergency operations. She went on to tell James that her husband physically abused her, a claim that Glenn Gilbert fervently denied. That November, Glenn believes that his wife tried to kill him by poisoning his food and later injecting him with a clear liquid which caused him to lose consciousness. Soon after receiving an ultimatum from her boyfriend, Christian called her husband and told him that she was leaving him. Around roughly the same time, the Northampton VA was experiencing an increase in the number of fatal heart attacks. They almost all occurred in the Ward C, the area where Kristen Gilbert worked. Prosecutors would later determine that in the seven years that she worked at this hospital, Kristen had been on duty for almost half of the 350 deaths that occurred in Ward C, a coincidence that was almost statistically impossible. Nurses had caught on to an on-site shortage of epinephrine, a synthetic form of adrenaline which can save lives when administered to someone having a heart attack, but is also fatal if improperly used. 
the drug also leaves little trace in somebody's body after it has been used. A formal inquiry was begun in February of 1996 after three nurses reported their suspicions of Christian Gilbert's involvement in the deaths of Kenneth Cutting, 41 years old, and Edward Squera, 69. During this investigation, Kristen quit her nursing job and ended up collecting workers' compensation due to an alleged shoulder injury. Her relationship with James, the security officer, at this point was fizzling out, and in July of 1996, she was institutionalized after another suicide attempt. She later called James from the psychiatric ward and told him, You know I did it. I did it. You wanted to know, and yeah, I killed those guys. After being released and upon learning that James was cooperating with investigators, she called in a bomb threat at the Northampton VA. Because of this, she was arrested and was sentenced to 15 months in jail. Kristen went on trial in November of 2000 for the deaths of the two men that she was accused of and also two others, and also for three counts of attempted murder. Though Massachusetts abolished capital punishment in 1984, Prosecutors were allowed to seek the death penalty since the crimes occurred on federal property. In their opening statement during the trial, the prosecution stated that Kristen would kill her victims in order to show off her nursing skills. And they stated that she would also do this to impress James, the security guard that she was having the affair with. They said that she would do this because when an emergency would happen, he would be called in in any emergency situation. She allegedly liked the thrill of medical emergencies. In the case of Kenneth Cutting's death, they claimed that she killed him simply to leave her shift early and meet James for a dinner date. In March of 2001, Kristen Gilbert was found guilty on three counts of first-degree murder, one count of second-degree murder, and two counts of attempted murder. Opinions on her sentencing were divided among the victim's families, with some wanting to see her put to death, and others content to see her just sit in jail. On March 26 of 2001, after deliberating for two days, the jury decided to spare her life. A judge later sentenced Kristen Gilbert to four consecutive life sentences, with no chance of parole. Now, many years later, she is serving out her life sentence at the Federal Medical Center, Carswell, in Fort Worth, Texas. Alright guys, so thanks for hanging out again today. Don't forget to like, rate, review, subscribe, wherever you're listening to this podcast. It really does help me out. Um, Just spreading the word out there is definitely a free way to help grow the podcast and get more content. Um, You can check out our subscription page. It will be linked in the episode notes. If you want to, you can send in your um, suggestions for any episodes to darkcrossroadspodcast at gmail.com or you can send them in through our website at www.darkcrossroadspodcast.com. You can send in any stories you want read or any cases that you want covered and researched. And if you could, don't forget to be weird, stay different, and don't trust anyone. Dark Crossroads Podcast is brought to you by Problem Wildlife. Problem Wildlife serves all of Western Massachusetts and has been humanely protecting your house and your family from unwanted pests for over 20 years. Take back your space with an animal control service that you can trust. They are family owned, fully licensed, and are knowledgeable and dependable. To find out more about their services, simply visit their website at www dot problem wildlife removal dot com again that is www dot problem wildlife removal dot com and their information will be included in our show notes